Hi there. My name is Devin Singh, and I'm a level designer at the Guildhall at SMU. Now, many people ask, what is matinee in Unreal, the Unreal development kit? And the answer is, matinee is the integrated animation system for Unreal Editor. Now, today I'll be talking about matinee's uses, as well as the processes and user interfaces associated with the system. Now, matinee can be used for movements, which include linear, lupin, and rotational movement, lighten, and camera movement and cutscenes. Let's begin the matinee process. First, open the content browser, and we want to select a static mesh. Let's use this barrel right here. Select it. So the first thing you'll notice is it's not loaded. So click on this icon right here to load static mesh. Now it's fully loaded. Right click in the perspective view and select add interp actor. So in essence, an interp actor is a movable version of a static mesh. Double click on the interp actor to open its properties and under movement and physics it should say fizz interpolate and this is to signify again that it is in fact a movable static mesh. Now that we've added an interp actor let's open Kismet and add a matinee sequence object. Right click in the gray space and select new matinee. Now the matinee sequence object contains three sides. The left side contains links to inputs, the right side contains links to outputs, and the bottom side contains links to variables. Now every sequence object contains a pre-attached variable, and it's called the matinee data variable. For simplicity's sake, this contains all the animation data that will be used in the animation. One last thing to note is upon clicking any matinee sequence object, it's Properties appear in the Properties window in the bottom left hand of Kismet. Here you can adjust things such as the animation's play rate, you can force it to loop or rewind upon playing. Now that we've added a matinee sequence object to Kismet, double click on it to open the matinee editor. Now the first thing you'll notice about the matinee editor is it's pretty complex looking if you've never seen anything like this. So, for simplicity's sake, let's just focus on this bottom area right here, the bottom half of the screen. This is called the timeline. Now the timeline essentially it controls the total length of the animation, designated by these seconds you can see down here. Now you'll see these markers. There's a red marker, green marker, and this black bar down here in the timeline. For now, let's let's ignore the green the green marker. It's really not important at this moment. But the red markers are called sequence markers. And by clicking and dragging, I can adjust the total time of the animation. This black bar with the white line is called the timeline cursor. And again, I can click and drag it, and it specifies an exact time in the timeline. So the first thing we want to do in the matinee editor is add a group. Now, group is essentially a container or a folder that holds a different type of animation. To add a group, minimize the editor and Kismet and make sure that the interp actor is selected. Once that's done, go back into the matinee editor, right click in this left dark gray area, select add new empty group and then minimize the editor and go to Kismet and you will see that you have a new variable. This new variable references the group that we just added. So this confirms that we've added a group correctly. Now that we have a group, which is essentially a container or a folder that holds different types of animations. Let's add a track, which is that type of animation. So right click 
on the group, and you'll have a list of different tracks you can add. In this example, I'm going to add a, a new movement track. Therefore, my animation will be a movement. Now, the next step is to add a key to the track. Now, a key is a property value at a specific time in a track. More specifically, a key contains two values, the first being a time value and the second being a property value. So first, let's assign the time value for this key. Head back to the Protective Viewport and make sure that the Interp Actor is selected. I return to the Matinee Editor and using the Timeline Cursor, specify the time value. Now, return to the effective viewpoint and let's assign a property value to this key. Now in this case, the track we're using is movement, so that's the type of animation we're doing. Therefore, the property that we're going to alter will be location. Let's just move the location of this center factor. And now we've added a property value to this key. So head back to the matter. And the last step is to add the key. So in review, we've used the timeline cursor to specify a time value. Then we've gone to the perspective view and we've changed the property of the interp actor to specify a property value for the key. And now we're going back into the meta editor to actual, actually add the key. So the top left of the general toolbar is the add key icon. Select that and the triangle will appear in the timeline. That is a key. Now one last thing. You will notice if you go back to Perspective Viewport that an animation path has appeared. This is the path that the interpactor follows.